<laughs> it's done, <laughs> right? So I have to replace this. And then the plan is to make some kind of pond here. End of March is when I get into all the pruning. So there's a lot of pruning to be done. That's spinach growing. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and uh, it's two days before spring and I thought I'd take you for a walk around the garden and just sort of look at the state of things and uh, walk you through my mindset of, of, of the list of things I'm planning to do over the next month or so. It's a, it's a fairly long list, um, but just to give you a sense of, uh, you know, the mind of a gardener with a large garden and all the different things you have to bear in mind. And of course, many of these things are things I don't have to do. There's when I'm, when I'm talking about the things I'm going to do, it means the things I want to do. And th there's a hierarchy among them of things that must be done and things that would be nice to be done. Uh, but anyway, let's go have a look around and uh, we'll see what's happening. It's just kind of like a garden tour, but sort of like the garden before the garden, <laughs> that sort of thing. So come on, let's have a look around. <laughs> All right, so number one, we got the, the pond. This is where most of my water comes from in early spring because it's, it's too cold to be running hoses. And uh, there's no evidence of uh, life in here. Um, but it's always like that this time of year. Uh, actually, I should have been out looking around yesterday when it was so warm. I wonder if the fish uh, rode. Anyway, my goldfish are, I assume, in here, and I assume they're alive. Because if they were dead, they'd be floating <laughs> on the surface. And this is actually one of the first springs in a while where I haven't found a dead one floating around. Usually, one or two of them don't make it through the course of the winter. All the fish seem to be fine because they're not floating. And uh, this is completely thawed. So I expect uh, next, next nice sunny day we're going to have some fish. All right, in we go. Now I got a lot of some fairly big projects and some smaller ones. Uh, one of the things I have to do this spring before the flies come out is this fencing. It's, uh, it's two inch by four inch, okay? And believe it or not, rabbits can wiggle through that, the younger ones. Now for a lot of the garden, I've got this chicken wire, two feet high chicken wire uh, on the outside. And for the most part, it keeps them from coming in because they just sort of walk along and try to find them, nose their way in. But it's starting to get worn out. The underbrush has sort of moved it around and so on and so forth. So one of the major projects I need to do this spring, and it must be done, I'll make a video on it, is to reconstitute the finer mesh that goes around the perimeter of the entire garden. Because the amount of damage one ra one small rabbit can do in a, in a matter of nights is incredible when your plants are small. And that seems to be when they like to do it. Uh, I had all my blackberries basically compromised by rabbits uh, last gardening season. One rabbit got in and basically just, just cut all the blackberry bushes down and wrecked them. So, uh, yeah, definitely have to deal with, deal with that. Uh, another thing I have to deal with is these, these two gardens here. I got French sorrel and... Uh, a uh, plant called Bloody Dog. It has another name too, but basically it's it's like a sorrel, but it's it's red, it has a blood color. Uh, this sorrel actually noticed there's a bit of new shoots coming up. So very, I mean, a lot of these garden beds, as you get a stick, a lot of the beds, I think, are still uh, frozen. Here, this is in there. I'll grab that. A lot of these are still still frozen so this one here is yeah it's still still frozen for the most part we'll try a few of them um, this spot over here where the French Sorel is this is a shady spot it's not necessarily one of my sunnier spots and the grounds for <laughs> you can see the grounds the grounds frozen <laughs> but it looks like you know I got some shoots coming up here Looks like I got some shoots coming up there. My guess is that the freeze doesn't go very deep. Because look, huh, there's new growth right in there. See? Right, that is new growth. That's not from last year, I don't think. Uh, anyway, one of the decisions I came to last year was that uh, I don't need this much French Sorrel. <laughs> that a four by five, four foot by five foot garden of French Sorrel is just uh, more Sorrel than any normal human needs. So as soon as this uh, thaws out, I'll be scooping these out and moving them and giving them away. I haven't decided where they're going to go. Um, I'm thinking of putting them up 
on this terrace garden where things don't tend to grow very well anyway. <laughs> so it's not much of a loss. I tried growing, it's a really sunny spot, uh, but I don't know if it's the soil quality or the way the drainage works or what. Um, but uh, everything I plant doesn't grow well there. Um, now, maybe this year could be different and the soil gets better every year, I don't know. But I decided this year to just plant things up there that I don't really care that much about. The things that are nice to have, but I don't really rely on. So I'm going to put some Egyptian walking onions up there. They're nice to have, but I don't rely on them. I'm going to try putting the sorrel up there. Make it almost like an herb garden sort of thing. Also, things that are up there have to be deer proof, right? Because this is outside the fence. Uh, so, you know, and they walk right along there. They basically walk right along the perimeter of the entire garden. Uh, but they definitely I've seen their footprints right in that bed. So it has to be something that they leave alone. Uh, anyway, so as soon as the soil's thawed up, I gotta scoop these out and these. And I don't know where I'm gonna put them, but uh I definitely have more of this than I need. I could plant something here that you know I can use, right? This is just it's just going to waste, right? I got like 80%, 75% more than I need for what I use it for. I right? use it for soups and pasta sauces and things like this but in in low amounts you don't have a big mess of them like you would kale or spinach or whatever it's not a main dish it's too too strong too intense of a taste to have it as a major component of a meal it's something you add a bit to things to sort of enhance uh, or change the character of the flavor uh, I think this is garlic here but you know one of the major so I, I've been looking around I don't see any garlic coming up um, I could have sworn I planted garlic there yeah, okay, I did. There's one right there. That, as far as I know, <laughs> is garlic, right? So, I mean, that growth could have started last fall before freeze up. Don't know. Right, really don't know. But as far as I know, that's garlic. I was pretty sure I made this a garlic bed. Uh, it just looks so neat and tidy, and I like using leaves over garlic. So, that bed's sort of done. But a number of these beds like this one here you can see it's falling apart and my uh my philosophy for my garden beds is that if there's any way i can tack them back together so this one's really it, it was it was like this last year uh but i just sort of tacked it back together and made use of it if there's any way i can just coax them into an i, I coax every possible season i can out of the the wooden beds especially now with the price of wood being so high um, but some of these beds are just, I mean, they're just done. They're past their, like this one here, the left side had rotted off. So I just attached one new, this here board is new. Um, but the rest of it's, <laughs> right, like this, <laughs> this is, it's done, <laughs> right? So I have to replace this. And this is one of these years I'm really going to think about whether I want to use wood or some other material like cinder blocks. I mean, cinder blocks get expensive as well but they last um so i'm gonna have to look at the price per, per foot and that sort of stuff um you know and, and make a decision <laughs> right gardening's all and i'm gonna have to do that soon i mean these are all all the things i'm talking about today are things i want to get done before you know within the next month i want to get them done before the black flies come out right we have an incredible i mean it's just my garden board is a forest we have an incredible amount of black flies here. It's it's just impossible to be out here uh, during the day when the black flies are around, unless you're doped up really good or wearing one of those spacesuits or whatever. <laughs> it's just not fun being out here. Um, anyway, so some of these beds, here's another one. It's sort of just, you know, a number of them have really reached their their limit, right? They, they would be seven, eight years old sort of thing, and the wood's just worn out. Uh, so, like, these ones are all relatively new, so they'll probably get another three years or more, right? Um, but a number of these beds need to be reconstituted and fixed. Uh, another thing that needs to be done is I need to uh, prune these grapes. Uh, I had a really good grape yield last year, but unfortunately bears got in and really took them out. I also have to take this barbed wire and sort of get it up high again, right? It sort of flopped over. And I think I had a deer sort of get over here, a bear or something. I need to get this barbed wire up back up high and that's all part of the pruning process and fence maintenance but you know I learned the hard way that having using the barbed wire as structure for the trellis 
doesn't make a lot of sense, right? It basically takes away the barb's wire, the barb wire's ability to do what it does. So I might have to add another section of barbed wire, barbed wire even higher because I'm pretty sure I had a bear or something come over this, come over here. This is just all bent up and messed up. So I think that was going on. So this needs to be pruned. I'm going to do that, you know, today or tomorrow or the next day soon, really soon, right? The end of March is when I get into all the pruning. So a lot of pruning to be done. Um, these grapes are part of that. Speaking of pruning, I'm going to have to have a look at this uh, apple tree. It's never been pruned. This is my sweet 16. Uh, I'm going to have to reposition some of these uh, cables. You know, I got a bit of a drainage problem in the garden here, and this tree just seems to always want to tip. So you can see I've got it sort of reinforced there with ropes and stuff. Uh, it's still not as straight as I like, and it doesn't have to be perfect straight. I don't care about that. But anyway, it's been, been about, I think this is year three for this. It was just a whip, right? This would have been like two feet high when I planted it. Uh, but it's grown really well. Who knows, I might get some fruit this year. Um, but this year I can see a little bit of pruning. Where we got the branches touching each other like that. Right? A little bit. I see this one's in, into that one. Right, that's all stuff you have to deal with. You don't want the plant sort of growing into itself. I'm not going to do a lot of, you know, when a plant's, when a tree's young, um, the advice I've been given is to not over prune the tree. You know, the, the tree needs to, the tree gets its energy from the sun, it needs leaves, it needs vegetative, it needs growth, right? It needs to grow and get as, collect as much sun energy as it can. And so when you're pruning, you're basically removing branches, which means you're removing leaves, which means you're removing its ability to gather energy from the sun. So you do a minimal amount of pruning that sort of optimizes to what the tree is able to do but not too much. So a few snips on this tree, you know, maybe I might do three, four cuts the whole thing. Uh, over here on this old boy, um, probably a little bit more extensive pruning work on this one here. It looks like we had another thing break here. Looks like we had a porcupine going to work in here. <laughs> Just by the way, that, that is obviously chewed off. That's what it looks like when a porcupine goes to work. I don't know how a porcupine got in here. Look at the work, look at that. Look at that bit the end right off that's crazy look you can see where they went to work on it down there that's porcupine that happened over the winter i didn't even know what happened <laughs> that's a problem it looks like he climbed up this branch and broke the whole thing right off as you can see where it broke over there all right man and just get this tree starting to be productive and then the whole forest goes to war against it uh, <laughs> anyway uh Got some pruning to do here with this tree, just clean it up and so on. I think that'll be a good video. I'm not an expert in pruning, but uh, I definitely enjoy pruning. <laughs> so I got to do something. I got to deal with that. What a mess. What a disaster. Oh, uh, boy. Anyway, that's, these things happen. It's just part of, part of the experience. Um, so I got pruning to do with that apple tree. Uh, this is one of my, I think it's a dwarf cherry. Probably a little bit of pruning there got uh, blueberry here this I believe is a dwarf cherry that somehow came up from the rootstock of this so I'm just gonna cut that off I don't think there's anything I mean you could say yeah or there's a cherry tree it's it's gonna grow cherries um, but uh, most of these cherries they're a variety grafted onto a rootstock so the rootstock doesn't necessarily have good tasting cherries. It's been chosen because it's tough. And then the, the, the variety that's grafted on the rootstock is chosen for, for flavor, right? So if it if there's a cherry growing over here, it's because you know the, the roots went over and started a new plant. So it's basically like a clone of the rootstock. So it's very unlikely that this is a good tasting cherry. I mean, it might be, who the hell knows, right? So anyway, I don't think it's worth devo devoting garden space too. Maybe I'll grow it somewhere else um, and just see what it becomes. Certainly it would be good for helping this plant to pollinate if it's literally a different variety, the rootstock variety and here we've got the, the actual graft variety. The two of them probably really be good for pollinating each other. Um, but I don't think it makes sense to have it 
in the garden proper casting shade where other things are trying to grow i'll put it over there somewhere i'll put it somewhere the uh pear tree that i planted last year which was a whip looks uh, healthy and happy and doing doing good right same with the pear tree that i planted over here now that brings to mind so i had an apple tree growing here and it died it just tipped over from having too much water and stuff and i've got theories on why that happened um, the gist of it is i think it's just too wet here so i have a major plan this year you can see look down here you know it almost like when you're flying in an airplane this is what a river looks like or a canyon especially if you're flying over the midwestern states uh, you know um, so basically there's water a good amount of water there must be some natural spring coming out of this hill where it comes down it gathers here it gets really soupy here on rainy days right it gathers here comes around the corner this is all stuff that's happening below the surface and just runs down now i put these logs here to sort of slow down the velocity of the water that was the idea but it hasn't done anything to minimize the washing out that's happening here right and you can see how much sand has been washed down to the bottom here it's it's right at it's right right at level with this wooden border right whereas when i would have first put the sand down it would have been maybe three inches below the top so a lot of sand has just been dragged down here by water so my master plan for this year and i mean i've committed to this i have gravel coming uh on you know in two days there's going to be gravel here in the driveway i'm going to put i'm going to make what's called a french drain i have gravel sort of enhanced french drain i'm going to have gravel and what they call big old pipe which is sort of perf perforated pipe so it's going to go along here right so there's going to be gravel and pipe along here about a foot deep okay i'll put sand back on top of when i'm all done but basically all the water coming down from this hill will gather in that It'll be graded and aimed so that it comes down. I'm just going to follow the way the water goes anyway. So I'm going to have gravel and big old pipe going to around here. And then the plan is to make some kind of pond here using this space. This is just a big, you know, think about it. It's, it's sort of a big useless space anyway. It should either be turned into a garden or something anyway. And by having a pond here, I'll have a source of water. So I just, you know, it'd just be handy instead of having to go over there to my goldfish pond to get water. I can just get it out of here. I've even bought a little sort of pump thing that I'm going to try to play with. See what I can do with that. Just a hand pump. Um, a cheap one, like $30 type deal I got on Amazon. Um, but this is big enough to do some sort of smallish pond. Uh, the plan is to put uh, rosy red uh, minnows in there. They're like a little tiny, not a goldfish, but they're tiny fish. Uh, I always like to have some sort of fish in the pond because I they eat the mosquitoes like my goldfish pond i was showing you earlier i've never fed the fish in there when they went in they were less than two inches long and i got fish in there that are like four inches long three four inches long now right never fed them <laughs> so <laughs> so they're eating something and i'm guessing it's mosquitoes and things like that right the aquatic insects that uh, uh, get laid in there by um the flying ones uh, anyway the plan is to have so that water will be coming in gathering here Every time it rains, that's so fell up because you can see how much oh, oh, you can see how much water is moving here through here, right? And then it'll have an out, right? So basically, I'll have another way for the water to get out when it gets too high, and it'll come down and go out out the back there. That's the idea, right? That'll be fun. That'll be a lot of work. But uh, luckily for me, I got a, a thirteen a thirteen year old boy and an eleven year old girl, and they're both. You know they're both, both pretty strong the 11 year old girl is pretty strong for her age <laughs> so uh, uh you know it's good to have uh things for your kids to do uh for uh for punishments and stuff like that <laughs> so let's hope they get themselves into some trouble so i can have them out here with a, a shovel doing doing some work so this is a new uh you know after school project we'll be bringing gravel down and just filling this in and over the next few days i'm going to start um digging the trench and getting that all together and i'll film that right but that's a major project basically creating a waterway that finds its way out 
and why not make a use collect you know have a place where the water collects i have to figure out some means of you know how deep it's going to be and have a few more things to figure out um, but over the next couple of days it's going to be raining the next couple of days so i'm going to go to a, a big box hardware store and just look at what's what's there and come up with some ideas um uh, and more on that later i don't want to get into it here i've got a number of different ideas of how to best make use of this space I, I want the pond here to be like my other one where i don't need a pump i don't need an oxygenator i don't clean it i don't do anything <laughs> right i just put fish in it and take water when i need it and everything works itself out that's what i want <laughs> right over at this end of the garden uh one of the main things i need to do well, i mean still things haven't thawed out there's the stalks from the kale last year I mean, there's a number of plants where the roots are still on the ground i want to get all of them out and fling them in the woods and you know whatever insects are in amongst the roots hopefully they they get wiped out this is a good time of year to do all that sort of stuff you know you pull them out of the ground if the eggs are there they're exposed to the in mean, the nights right now are zero degrees celsius that sort of thing below zero so uh you can expose whatever eggs are you know kicking around from uh, slugs or what you know whatever uh you know non-beneficial <laughs> insects are there uh to the elements uh here this is my um, egyptian walking onion garden and decision i made last year was that this is just too big this is too much egyptian walking onion i don't they don't have i don't find it to be a versatile enough onion you can i mean the greens are nice to use any anywhere you would need uh, green onions bunching onions right um, but the actual onion part of it is it's like a huge garlic clove or a very small onion uh, flavor wise it's almost in between garlic and onion and it's nice to have but again it's not practical if you want to make a meal where you need onions it's it's sort of tedious to shell and clean them and that sort of thing so i just have way 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 more of this than i need and this this particular bed is really prime real estate this is a good it's really good soil it gets really good sun it's productive so i don't think it makes sense to to to, to use that whole space for something i don't really eat a lot of i use it but it is not like a main thing <laughs> right so i think i'm going to tuck some of these just along the border along the edges you know little, little tuck them in here tuck them in there just have them around right almost like a weed that i like in the garden as opposed to having a space devoted to them right and i'll grow something uh that i like you know something i i rely on that's a key item here like tomatoes or squash or kale or whatever right so that's another big project i got to do you can see here i got another sort of issue here might make sense to build another french drain here i got no real real estate for building another pond and nor do i want to um, but this one drawback of this sand is that if your garden is on a grade and mine is it's on a slight grade maybe you know 10 degrees or something like that um, that it will wash downhill if you get a heavy heavy rain which we do <laughs> this is nova scotia canada we're a peninsula in the north atlantic ocean we get rain and we get intense heavy rain and wind uh it seems like more so every year and in the winter it seems to be we get snow and ice and rain um we get a lot of rain in the winter it seems like uh with climate change that seems to be how we're getting our winters uh we get as much snow as we've ever got but it seems at least where i am close to the coast we seem to get a lot of rain with our snow uh, and generally speaking a lot of the sand that i've laid down is down near the bottom of the garden now um, so it's another thing I have to do is I have to get another load of sand and reconstitute You can see how some of the beds are just like this one here would have been the sand would have been You know up to here And, <laughs> and now the beds above the sand now part of that's just heaving from frost and stuff like that um, But anyway, there's there's some work to do to getting these beds back the way they're supposed to be and I'm going to have to get uh, another you know uh load of sand so i mean i like i think the benefits of the sand outweigh the drawbacks um but it's definitely something if you're looking at my garden you like the way it looks and i mean one of the main things the sand has to offer is that it just gathers up so much heat right and it's relatively weed proof it really depends on you know if you get like i had a spot here 
there was a table or something here so some weeds got a, a bit of a foothold here so i'm gonna have to deal with that but basically it is a pretty weed proof um you know walking path medium i'd say generally speaking and it gathers a lot of heat so if you're with somewhere where you're trying to make the most of the heat that you get like if you're far north or or like me you just don't have a lot of um you know good sunny days like the sun the sun's over there somewhere and it's 10 o'clock in the morning so you should see it but it's behind clouds <laughs> probably over there should be pretty much due east this time of year and that's east over there i can't see any sun <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's somewhere <laughs> right so uh, it's handy having this sand to gather heat but one of the drawbacks if you're on a grade like this is that it just sort of seems to go down also I mean it bears mentioning this garden I used to have walking paths here that were all uh, wood chips and all of that organic material is constantly breaking down so every year it's, n it's not so much that I'm losing sand but the stuff that's under the sand is going, is getting compressed and going down as it breaks down, right? So that's something, that's one drawback. But the benefit is that I get all this heat. It's weed, rel relatively weed proof. And uh, it's also, and the main reason I, I use the sand was that it's tick proof. Uh, another project I got to do this year is, I don't know, th these are kind of falling apart. I think they might have another year in them, but they're, they're really, actually, you know what, I, I just, just thinking about it, I think I might let them go another year. But basically these little beds are really starting to you know, come apart at the seams. I think what I'll do this year is just a, a sort of half-assed uh, quickie repair. And uh, see how they're starting to, starting to tip forward? I mean, I'm being overly fussy here, but this is low on the priority, but... And these are starting to fall apart and they're starting to sort of fall down. My guess is that where they are stuck in the ground, these are just driven into the ground like pegs. They're just starting to rot out. So I need new ones that can hold everything up. Uh, so that is something that uh, needs to be done. It's not essential, but it's something I plan to do. Another thing I plan to do is sort of is reconstitute this, this little retaining wall, <laughs> right? This little garden here works great. It's a great garden, it's south facing. Everything I plant here grows well, um, but the wood that it's made out of is starting to really fall apart and rot out. So I need to do something to, to bring that back. It's a real shame lumber costs so much because turning trees, using trees for stuff like this, you know, the great thing about trees is that they're, I can get them for free. Um, and they work, but, you know, lumber uh, behaves better, <laughs> let's put it that way. But the trees do work anyway there's some work to be done there because that's falling apart you can see this one here is is so rotten right so some work with the logs that needs to be done as well i got a bit of a you know weed encroachment issue here i got to deal with that uh <laughs> it seems you know what i mean so there's a lot of a lot of little things to do but i mean this is all for me this is all enjoyable outside time so it's not a big problem uh one last thing i wanted to look into was uh whether there's anything growing under here. So this bed is a place where I planted spinach and lettuce, uh, I think three weeks ago. And uh, I checked it last week, I think it was last week, and there was nothing happening. So let's uh, let's check it today and see if there's anything growing. I have not been out, have not had a look at this since that last check. All right, so right there. I think that's spinach over there. I think there's some right here. Here's another one. I don't know how well you can see that. Right there. Right at the end of my finger. That's spinach growing. I see another one right there in the same line. Right there. So it's just. I'm glad I didn't go too whole hog, but the spinach, it appears, is just starting to grow. I don't see, there's certainly some weeds coming in, <laughs> that's happening. Um, I saved lettuce seed that I planted, stupid weed, um, don't see any of that 
growing, but that doesn't mean anything in, in and of itself. Could be that it just needs a few more days or, or whatever, but I don't see any any pattern, any sign of anything, because I planted lettuce down the middle here. But it appears that the spinach is growing, the lettuce isn't growing, the spinach is seeds I, I got from Bessie Seeds, you know, um, professionally saved and professionally stored and all that sort of stuff, where with quality control, whereas the uh, lettuce seeds are just, uh, you know, a plant that I let go to flower and hung upside down in my shed all winter. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, that seems to work, so I'm still optimistic. I think something will still happen. Uh, I'll give it, but if nothing happens in the next two weeks, given that, given that the spinach is growing, so if I don't see any action from that lettuce in the next two weeks, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it and replant. So that's where we are here, uh, two days before the beginning of spring in 2022. A lot of things to do in the garden. <laughs> a lot of little projects to do but that's that's all good stuff this is the sort of thing you do you come home from work you have supper and then you've got a little bit of sunlight now in the evenings you go out and see what you can knock off in an hour or so every night it keeps you keeps you out of trouble keeps you busy a little bit of exercise some fresh air fresh air after a you know sort of a long day doing whatever it is you do uh, for me it's it's the best therapy <laughs> just being out in the garden doing something you know getting dirty in the garden <laughs> so uh that's where we are this time of year i hope you found that interesting if you did please like share subscribe until next time get out there get at it have fun in your garden thanks for watching